my movie recollection with Vincent Cloud. And me, John Nemeth. And this is the show where we draw movies like they were straws. <laughs> and uh, what, whatever we pick, we have to make the other person guess it by uh, giving some clues. And you uh, hope even, you don't draw the short one. Yeah, the, sh- the short film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, then even if you guess the movie, you have to... If you haven't seen it, you have to give a plot to it. So uh, there you go. What kind of prize is that? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I know Scott hates doing that. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> There's no way to get it right. I'm like, that's not the point. <laughs> All right. Um, let's draw from your movies, John. All right. Um, ooh, this is kind of a one-word title, but actually a five word title oh, shit. Uh, okay. starts with s as in silly five words starts with an s but could be one yeah word oh like is it, this like an acronym or something no it's oh. um it's something colon and then some explaining bullshit oh okay um uh, anyone in it? That I might know. Um, probably. <laughs> um, oh, Donald Glover's in it. Donald he's, Glover. He's fun in it. Uh, oh, not Danny. We're thinking Donald, huh? Yep. Okay. Um, it's you know part of one of the big franchises of our times. Oh, uh, uh Spider Man. Nope. Uh, no. No. Nope. Oh, shit. Wow. Um and it's it's not Marvel. Um Spider Man. I, I was gonna say like we're technically under Sony at the time. I know, I know, but <laughs> no, yeah, not even that. <laughs> but it is by another large franchise under that same studio. Or not as Spider Man, but as the other Marvel stuff. Oh my gosh. Uh anything any other clues? Um, I mean, there was a bunch of them in the 70s, and then, um, or 70s and 80s, I don't know, actually, and then a couple more in the early aughts, and then... Oh, Solo? Yes. Uh, the Hans, the, the Solo, fuck. A Star Wars story. Yeah, okay, wow. All right, never saw it, heard it was bad, heard it was, it could have been good, but they fired the directors? Which were like comedians or whatever, and then they just hired fucking what's his name Opie to yes. uh, direct the movie. <laughs> and it's a Han Solo origin story. I just kind of know what the movie is a little bit, where it's like, oh, this is where he meets Chewie, and then that's this is where he meets Lando, perhaps wins it in a card game or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Was it yep. good? It was. I don't know. I didn't hate it, but it was. I don't care a lot about Star Wars, so you know it wasn't going to make me mad if it was bad, like for a lot of people. Um, I also don't like love everything they put out on on the other hand either. So I was fairly indifferent to it, but it was fun enough to watch. You know, of course, it did the stuff that seek or not that uh, prequels do, where. Um, they unex- unnecessarily over explain how things came to be. Like, there's literally a scene where he's going through like customs or something, and then they're like, Yeah, so what's your name? Who are your people? And he's like, My people? What do you mean? Like, I'm I'm alone. <laughs> oh, so you're solo. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Jesus. Well, did the uh do do did the guy who plays Han Solo capture the essence that is Harrison Ford? <laughs> uh no, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that he did. I don't know, I'm trying to think like um you know, thinking of like Chris Pine doing Kirk, he didn't necessarily try to capture Shatner 
right, um, right, right. At yeah. all, like he, I mean, that wasn't what he was going for. Yeah. So, like, whether or not you should be in that role, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, Could someone have done it better? Like, was it a casting thing? Because, yeah, was it a casting thing? I don't know. I mean, it's like who who's a who's a young Harrison Ford in our arsenal? I was gonna say River Phoenix, but he's mm -hmm. dead. But yeah. he did play Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the movie though was it nothing? What is it about? Um, it was um i'm trying to remember it like his you, you know how good i am at remembering I, I think his um girlfriend or something was either part of some criminal thing and just got or like her family was and she got taken away because of it or she got kidnapped or got in trouble with the planetary government or something, but it, for some reason was like, he, he got separated from her and um, then they, they get reunited, I believe, you know, years later and have to like work together and he's not, sure if he can trust her because she's kind of got um blackmail stuff being held over her and whatnot and um you know like everyone they're they're working with are are shady characters and stuff so you never know like um who, who you can rely on who's gonna screw you over all that stuff is there a uh lightsaber in the entire movie Mm, not to my memory, but that doesn't mean anything. No, that's all. good. I think the the lightsaber and the Jedi stuff is kind of being overused. Not that it's like bad or anything, but it's like, come on, there's other aspects of this fucking franchise and this world. Um, yeah, especially since yeah. like the Jedi are supposed to be so rare or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so that they're, they're every third person you see in these movies is a Jedi. Yeah, and like, oh my god, I could go on and on. But like, isn't there like shows, Star Wars shows popping up all the time? And there's like, oh my god, there's Jedi. I'm like, well, I thought they were supposed to be extinct. I thought they were. Uh, fuck, I get so angry about that. <laughs> oh my god, but dang it. Okay, so you said you don't really care about Star Wars though, like at all. No, like, um, I seen each movie a maximum of two times oh, okay some of them probably only once um i don't know they just didn't they don't like they're not the thinking man's sci-fi you know what i mean like, <laughs> yeah that's they're that's not, true they're not like raising like i, I like sci-fi with like just making you think of philosophical what-ifs and um like, or things that just really have, like, pieces of technology that just, like, really, like, warp your brain. Like, oh, what if, what if there was something like that? Or what if we could do that? Oh, sure. But that's never been the, the goal of Star Wars. Yeah, it's more of the feeling man's <laughs> <laughs> movie, sci-fi movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um. It could have been good. Han Solo is a single story that that could be cool. I think Han Solo is rather cool. I keep saying cool. <laughs> cool guy. Um. Yeah, yeah, it's just always tough. Like, um, like, um, we had uh, what was it, Cruella, on the other day, where it's like the origin story of Cruella Deville from the Hundred and One Dalmatians, and like. It was fine. It was like a fun movie, but it it's like we're we're supposed to like develop affection for this person who we know becomes like evil incarnate and 
Yeah. Like, like later on, which was really weird. Um, at least in like um, Solo, Han Solo is, you know, like he's not a villain or something later on. He's, you know, like a person of questionable morals all along. And, you know, so building to that is a lot easier than like, all right, we're going to make you like this guy. And then, oh, remember you hate him. Yeah, really. All right. Well, uh, enough of this movie that just was okay. Let's go with one <laughs> of my movies. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, it's a three word title. I believe. L let me click on it. It might be the something. Nope. It's a three word title starts with a B as in baby. All right. Bringing up baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh no basketball and love um yeah uh, 90s uh vampire movie oh of course it is <laughs> well, <laughs> probably talk about um <laughs> well that was like one episode <laughs> <laughs> oh man vampire movie starts with b yeah this is weird um bordello of blood yeah kind of thing. yeah that's it. <laughs> or <right>. of blood. <laughs> That's as a, great. As a phrase, it's familiar. <laughs> Beyond that, um, no idea. I it's um conjuring imagery that I know is actually from Dusk Till from oh, from Dusk Till Dawn. So yeah. I know that's not it. Um <laughs> Okay, well, Think of a plot involving uh, Dennis Miller. He's the lead. <laughs> oh, man. I was going to try and do an impression, but I, I don't got it. <laughs> okay, Chachsky or whatever. Whatever, <laughs> whatever he says. Um, interesting. So yeah. it's not, not super serious, apparently. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, to take it literally, this, this guy shows up at a place to find a sex worker and uh, goes in there and once it's too late realizes that all the ladies are vampires and he's uh somehow gotta escape with his neck and other parts intact Wow, no wonder you have Dusk Till Dawn comparisons. It's kind of the same thing, except they go to a strip club, right? Uh, yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, yeah, that pretty much <laughs> took place entirely in the strip club, didn't it? Uh, okay, well, this is a m the second movie ever from the show Tales from the Crypt. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you got the opening. That, that makes sense. That opening skeleton guy <laughs> like yeah do you remember watching that and you're like so young that you're kind of amused at what he's saying and he looks horrifying so it's 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 like a double thing that's happening <laughs> yeah and like all the all the puns <laughs> <laughs> well i i was i was so young i didn't know those were puns <laughs> Well, that's just how scary people talked. Yeah. I'm like, he really thinks he's really funny. He just keeps laughing at his own words. <laughs> um, okay, so Dennis... Oh, it actually starts off with a little... Uh, um, uh, uh, no longer young actor, but Corey Feldman. This was when he was, like, no longer one of the Feldmans or the, the Corys, you know? Corey. Yeah, this is... With this his, is... Own, his own guy. Yeah, late in the 90s, and he's supposed to play some sort of, like, teenager dude, and you're like, oh, no, he's not a teenager. He was a teenager when I was a kid, and now I'm a teenager, so I know, you know? Yeah. Uh, but he goes to the bordello first, and of and that's the lead character's little brother. And then he quickly gets bitten, so you're like, oh, well, there goes Corey Feldman, you know? Um. And then the rest is like, I think Dennis Miller is like a con man or something. I don't know if he's a, uh, 
what do they call it? Uh, church praise. Uh, I don't know what like a con oh, man, like a televangelist. Yes, yeah, I think he might be that. But she, the the one woman, she's like, oh my god, my brother, you got to help, and he's like, I doubt it's real vampires. But it's a, I remember watching it even though I was young and I was like, Oh, these vampires are kind of hot. You know, I was kind of into that enough, but I'm like, God, this movie's kind of bad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like, there's only like a 15% chance that these are real vampires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't, I couldn't tell you anything that stands out about it. And then it ends on a weird down note where like, the girl turns out to be a vampire at the end and then is biting Dennis Miller. And it's just like, they slowly pan off of them, like struggling in a car. You're like, that's a weird fucking ending, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like almost broad daylight. So it was extra weird. You're like, aren't vampires. I thought they're not supposed to go in the daylight. None of it made sense. And it ended. So yeah, it ended so bad. It's really too bad. Do you remember what was the other? Tales from the Crypt movie? It was called Demon Knight. I've never seen it, but that's with Billy Zane as the bad guy. Okay. Looks cool. I, I, I do eventually want to check it out, but it might be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but the shows, the shows were good. I remember watching the shows in some episodes I still remember, and they were pretty good. So, yeah, this was just a, a failure, a flop. And it's a mistake to... Uh... Make a movie if you're just a TV show. Yeah. Or vice versa. Sometimes um, sometimes your stories are meant for the, the format that you're already doing. Yeah, that's true. It, yeah, that's probably what it worked. Except for the uh, upcoming Broadway musical of my movie recollection. That's going to be good. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> what, would, uh, what would some lyrics be? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like, subscribe, comment. <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get off of this thing. Uh, right. New movie. And Boy, we've had two, two, two stinker roonies. Oh, in my a row. gosh. It's literally the same director as my last one. Um, All right. It's... Oh, great. Ron Howard, then. Yep. Um, based on a very like popular kind of um, what do you call them? Like airport books kind of thing, or not even airport. Just like it was one of those like novels that everyone at the time knew about. Um, it oh yeah, four four words. First, oh word the of, Da Vinci Code. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, so yeah, th this was a phenomenon, right? Yeah, for sure. Like the books were huge, and then the movies. I think the movie was huge. Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah. At least the first movie was huge. I know they. I don't remember if the other ones were as successful, but I remember, like, I read. At least the the Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons, and um, they were like they were page turners, you know, like they they kept you going through them. I, I enjoyed them at the time. Wow. Okay. So, so uh, let's talk about the plot real quick. But I w did want to ask: Did the movie, you know, live up to the book? I think I saw the movie first. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So did it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're, they're probably of equal caliber. Someone said it was kind of like, not cheap, but like kind of like, oh, you, you read this really quick story and it just kind of like, oh, what's this? And then you're done with it or whatever. People said that about Gone Girl as well. Do um. You... Yeah, I don't know. Like it's... Yeah, it's not super deep. They set up um, mysteries, but then kind of don't leave them hanging around too long. Like they they lead you to the conclusion fairly quickly, but then you know set up the next thing for you to wonder about. Yeah, and um, like, don't they say literally call them just page tur turners? Like almost yeah. like a 
Yeah. Yeah, and I think like the chapters were like really short, so like, oh, okay, yeah, it'd, it'd, like be like six pages or something would be a chapter, and so you just felt like you're cruising through the thing. Oh my gosh, kind of like how this podcast is supposed to be, like one movie <laughs> after the other, real quick chapters. Okay, exactly. but we gotta discuss the plot though. Um, it's in where is it? Paris? Where is it? Yeah, I think so. Um, or no, is it Rome? Or it sounds. Maybe there's it... parts in both. Because yeah. I know, like, um, the, uh, like, the Catholic Church is heavily involved in it, but that, that's maybe more so in the other one. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Paris, mostly for the first one. And yeah, because it's like the Louvre and stuff, right? Was that the pyramid looking yeah. museum? I'm thinking, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, like, uh, so the Tom Hanks, he's like a symbologist or whatever his title is. Like he's an expert on, um, ancient symbols and like, I think mostly in like religious use. Um, and yeah, it's like in a way kind of like. Indiana Jones stuff without as much adventure. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, but like, you know, archaeology, um, like mystery solving kind of stuff. Well, it's a does, doesn't it start off with a murder? And he's like, I'm not, I'm not a murder guy. But like, there's symbols near the body, maybe. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, I don't know. I I feel like I just watched. American Dad, and they kind of did a parody of this, where Steve is like, "My selective dyslexia finally paid off," or something like that, because <laughs> he's able to like rearrange the letters or something. Yeah. Uh, isn't isn't the who's the woman? Isn't that Amelie? That actress? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of so, cool. Yeah, it's got to be France, right? Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh isn't Paul Bettany in it? Like he's like the sickly priest and he's got some fucking I don't know what it is, some torture device on his leg that he tightens every scene or something. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, and like the self flagellation and stuff. Yeah. Like um I think actually I watched um watched this in the theater with my former girlfriend now wife and she oh. hated the like the self whipping kind of thing like that really grossed her out and you're like well <laughs> take the the uh the, the snm off the list of future adventures <laughs> <laughs> oh man um okay so what is it though it's like don't they move the last dinner and something like that? Like they, the, 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 the clues are in paintings and stuff. Right. Yeah, exactly. I like, I think specifically like, you know, Leonardo da Vinci's work, um, like the last supper and I don't remember what else, but yeah, isn't like the, the final, um, like, the reveal that Jesus and Mary Magdalene were lovers and they actually had like a child and the bloodline of, of that child survives until the modern day or something like that. Whoa. I don't remember that. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Maybe I heard it and I'm like, so, <laughs> so, so he, he got him some with a hoe. I mean, sex worker. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think this might've meant more to me if I was like a Christian or knew more about that sort of stuff. But I was like, oh, they kind of go on a trip. Tom Hanks screws his hair out for this movie. It looked kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's like a weird, like subsection of people where you have to like know about Christian, like imagery and, um, mythology and stuff. But then also not be like precious about it if you're if they're like being sacrilegious, which is actually kind of makes it surprising it was that successful. 
but I guess you didn't necessarily need to have a background on it. They just kind of doled it out for you as you went along. Hmm. Um, and you were, you were kind of Christian at the time or were you like, no, that's far behind me. I'll just enjoy this movie. Um, yeah, I was definitely in my, um, what do you call it? Cognitive dissonance phase where it's like, I, I didn't really know what I believed or not at that time. And yeah, I just, I didn't take it too seriously as a movie, you know? All right. And neither will I. <laughs> Let's go to another movie. <laughs> All right. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, so it's my list, right? It is three word title. Um, the first word is a number. Oh shit. Three word title. Yes. So it's not too fast, too furious. <laughs> <laughs> Three Blind Mice. Is that a movie? <laughs> Three um, Musketeers is more of a movie than Three <laughs> Blind Mice. <laughs> Two Musketeers starts with the, you idiot. <laughs> um, uh, 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 Killian Murphy. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Um, I only know him from Nolan and Boyle movies. Exactly. Oh. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, my gosh. I can't figure out the name, but there is another name uh, actor in that movie. But I, Brendan, Brendan Gleeson, I think. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. 28 Days Later. Yeah. Dude, I, I, I really movie. like this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I really like I'm a it. big fan. Oh my god! Like for the other podcast, uh, it's it's written down in the loves of the Twenty Eight Days Later soundtrack. Like okay, I, yeah, that's oh, I I keep listening to that song, uh, those songs. Okay, so the movie though, it's uh, this was the the dawn before dawn of the dead. This was the dawn of running zombies. Mm -hmm. i yeah, so that's cool. It's, you know, it's post-apocalyptic. Killian Murphy wakes up and, like, all of London is abandoned and stuff. Um, and it's shot on digital camera. Or, yeah, digital cameras, right? Like, it's shot really cheaply. Yeah, and, like, I think, like, wasn't Danny Boyle one of the first ones to, like, kind of understand, like, we don't have to make cameras look like they used to if they're digital, So, like, let's actually take advantage of the the medium and, like, you know, instead of having, like, this giant box you're carrying around, let's make backpacks and then just have, like, a little handheld optical device that, like, that's what you actually need to have mobile and was able just to get, like, way easier, like, maneuverability out of it, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh... So, of course, with all these movies, he's not really alone. He's not really the last person. Uh, he runs into Brendan Gleeson and his little daughter. I don't remember names. Then he runs into, what's her name? God, I don't remember the names at all. But, uh, again, the, the zombies run. And it's because this isn't, they're not undead. It's rage from monkeys. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so let me ask you, how do you, how do you like that concept? How does that sit with you? Are you a zombie purist? No, not at all. <laughs> like, uh, whatever flimsy premise you want to put as to why the zombies are the way they are, that that's fine with me. Yeah. Unless it, unless it's a hex, then no way. <laughs> well, uh, see, <laughs> I, I am kind of, I think I might be indifferent to zombie movies because A lot, same old trends of like, oh my god, we have to. Uh, is that a pregnant woman? Ah, oh, goddamn it! Like, <laughs> you know, or some, you know, it turns out man is the worst monster. That's always the fucking, and that's the deal here at the end. They go to like a military holdout or something, and then yeah, 
Yeah. And it, yeah, doesn't it then turn out like, and obviously we're going to pass the women around like objects. All right. Like, yeah. <laughs> That song though that's happening again with the soundtrack in the in in the house in a heartbeat or something, that is just one of many great songs on that soundtrack. Oh, it's awesome. But yeah, okay, I check so, that out. I've never never listened to it. Oh, uh, Killian Murphy. There's the moment where he has to strike back at the military people, and there's the shot. He's like he's like in the rain and he's hiding behind this tree, and it looks like he's a zombie himself. Or something like, do you remember that shot? Yeah, kind of. It kind of looks like his eyes are rolling up in the back of his head mm -hmm. or something. And yeah. I'm like, is he some sort of hybrid zombie? Like, I was really confused, but to good effect, though, I was it was frantic. So it's just um, rage from a more natural place. Oh, yeah. Causing, yeah. causing him to behave similarly, perhaps. Oh, that's good. Wow, that works. Um, damn it. There's so many awesome shots. Okay, so uh, Gleason spoilers. He's like, there's a crow eating on a zombie, and he keeps cawing at him, and Brendan Gleason gets really annoyed. And he's underneath him. He's like, shut the fuck up, bird. And a little drop from the the blood lands in his yeah. eye. And his daughter's yeah, that there. that was devastating. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, yeah, he was just such a great guy through that entire movie. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, the scene where they're in the grocery store getting all that food was a lot of fun. It was a nice little respite from all the dourness and stuff like that. That was cool. I can't, I can't really talk about this movie without just referencing the soundtrack that comes with it because danny boyle loves his music he loves oh, yeah. his soundtracks for sure dang uh any any other scene that you remember from this um yeah i was gonna actually bring up the blood dripping thing um <laughs> yeah. i'm sure was the was the one of the army guys was that christopher eccleston like is was that a the, doctor who yeah reference i think so yeah yeah um and he was like in danny boyle's first movie i believe also shallow grave or whatever still gotta watch that but it's good yeah it is um oh, man. how does it start is it like a he's in the hospital kind of thing um, I, well as, the as, as very the very first scene is is the people breaking into that lab. Right. And, yeah. But I mean, as far as like um, our, our intrepid lead, like how does he start out or how do we get introduced to him? Yeah, he just he just woke up. Apparently he got in an accident. He just happened to not be disturbed while everyone else was getting killed yeah. and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That sounds right. Yep. And didn't fucking Walking Dead steal that whole fucking concept? Where they have the sheriff wake up and he's like, oh, what happened? It's just the same scene. Oh, my gosh. That show annoyed me. Um, Which came first, though? The uh, Walking Dead graphic novel or? Yeah. I mean, the movie was way before the show. But, again, I don't know about the graphic novel. I mean, that's been a trope forever. What's the, like the day of the Triffids or whatever? Where the guy, like... um. He, uh, his eyes get injured somehow or another. I don't even remember why, but he's like covered, his eyes are covered because they're like healing and he's like in a hospital and then, uh, something happens in the sky and this bright light and everyone becomes blind. But then because he was recovering, his eyes were recovering and covered and everything that he was like one of the few people left you could still see. What about the blind? <laughs> People that were born blind. They should be okay, well, right? <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> that, now I want to watch that movie. That would be great if the, the blind turn on him. Like, they're basically zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Hey, this shit. is our thing. <laughs> yeah. We were supposed to be in charge of <laughs> Yeah. He's like, no, the, the land of the blind. <laughs> <laughs> that whole thing. Um, okay, so can we talk? Let's talk about the ending real quick. With the uh, it ends on a bright note, right? 
it ends on positivity because they show the zombies just um uh dying from hunger because again these aren't on the undead or anything they're just right really pissed off people <laughs> <laughs> and when they kill people they weren't eating it they i mean they might have did they bite but they did not swallow is that the difference <laughs> <laughs> we hold ourselves to a high moral code we will bite you <laughs> we will rip your flesh off we will chew it but we will not swallow it oh man but yeah, it, it ended on positivity, and I really like that just because almost all zombie movies end on a down note. Like, watch any of them. Just go ahead, John. Pick five. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many movies out there. Holy crap. I know. I'm like thinking of the OG, Night of the Living Dead. Yep. Like, yeah. That's pretty bleak at the end. Yeah, for sure. Um, Well, I guess we could leave, uh, unless you want to discuss the sequels real quick. Um, never seen it or them. Wow. Well, the, the third one isn't out. They just announced it. And I think they might be filming soon. The 28 years later. Yeah. Yeah. 28 weeks though. How's that one? I need to watch it again. There's the best part is Robert Carlyle. If you know who that actor is, he's awesome. He's he was uh, in train spotting. Yes. As big. Yeah. Bigby. So yeah, like he was awesome in that movie. He's just as awesome in this. It follows him as the dad and like all of his stuff is the best part of that movie. It just didn't live up to the second one. I don't think they filmed it the same. Danny Boyle wasn't director. So I don't know. We'll see if this third one's any good. Yeah. What about 28 days? <laughs> so oh, the prequel that's right no 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 virus it's just sandra trying to get clean <laughs> all right uh let's let's do one of your movies jarn all right make it a good one yeah i oh my god i would love to discuss 28 days later in a i would do it do that as a recollection scene by scene anniversary thing but that's like when is that? 2005, 2006? Oh, well, it's coming soon. <laughs> Damn it. It's a year right. or two away. All right. Uh, four word title. And the first word is a number. And I'm not copying you. All right. Um, Too fast. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, it's got Brad Pitt out in it, not as the star. Oh, uh, wait, uh, four words you said? Yep. Shit. I was going to say 12 monkeys, but. You got the 12 right. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, Ocean's 12? Nope. No. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> 12. Uh, Michael Fassbender. Oh, uh, oh, wait. I don't know this. Huh. Um, Lupita. No, not to say her name. Nyongo or whatever. Uh, oh, man. Directed by Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen? The modern one, not the. Oh. Lightning McQueen. I don't know. <laughs> wow, I am drawing blanks. Uh, what, is it an action, horror, what is it? It's a period piece. Pre-Civil War. That, and that's a big clue. Oh, is it uh, 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 12, 12 Years a Slave? That's right. Yeah, okay. Never saw it. I imagine it's horribly depressing. <laughs> but it's about the, the will, the human will to <laughs> finally be free. Um, I know that the main actor I liked, he was in other movies. Um, what's his fucking name? Chittal something. Yeah. I, I, I'm not trying to say his name either. But he was cool in, uh, Serenity and other movies. And then I heard that he's going to be in this movie and I'm like, oh, he's the lead. And then later on he gets nominated for best actor. I'm like, good for him. I just never saw it because... 
it does not sound pleasant. <laughs> I was going to say, originally, I was going to say 12 days of slave. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> it could be worse. Uh, the worst almost two weeks of my life. Make a movie out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Well, uh, did you like it? Did, did I get the yeah. plot right? Um, it was definitely good. Um, I think I only ever saw it in theaters. Um, the, I think the idea was that our lead, I don't remember if he was from the North or what the deal was, but like he was a free man, but then somehow got kidnapped or just like somehow mixed up in like this like slave auction that was going on and, um, you know, his like obviously none of the people gave a shit about anything he was saying about what his status was and everything. So um, you know, he went from a guy living a pretty, you know, normal for the time life, I think in the north, and then yeah, like just um be became a slave on a on a plantation. Um and so yeah, it's like always one of those weird things. It's like, yeah, obviously this was horrible for everyone, but it it, it makes it more relatable because it, it just almost feels like, oh, yeah, you know, I could be living my normal life and then just get, like, plucked away into, like, some sort of horrible existence. Um, you know, and, like, not saying it's less bad for people who were, like, born into their whole lives or it just makes it feel different for some reason. Um yeah, I again struggle to remember a lot of the the specifics of it. Um, I believe, like, I'm trying to remember. Like, I think Brad Pitt comes in as a not bad guy, but I'm not even sure about that. Well, yeah, I think he produced it, right? Yeah, yeah, and I remember seeing him like. And thinking, oh yeah, like he produced this and then gave himself that role <laughs> as a result. Um, not that he was bad in it or anything, but just like he it stuck he out for some reason. He wanted the lead. It's <laughs> like that. <you> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, do you remember the end? Like, how does it? Like after those twelve years, like does someone he you know shows up finally? He's like, hey, I want to buy a. Oh, never mind. You know? Yeah, I think essentially that's it. Like somehow after all that time, word gets out about who he is and something. Um, I think, but um Oh really? So he yeah. doesn't escape. Like someone has to show up and be like, hey, this is wrong. I feel like that's the case, but I'm not even I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Yeah, because I'm trying to think, like, how long was Andy Dufresne in Shashi? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, a, probably about 12 years. Sounds about right. 12 years of Shashi. Uh, yeah. It's catchier. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Something about that title, 12 Years a Slave, it's like, that does not sound at all appealing. I know it's not supposed to, but that mm -hmm. sounds horrible. Like, I can't imagine... You know, some people, the you know, they were never fucking freed and shit like that, or so it's just like twelve days, twelve, 12 years a slave, <laughs> twelve hours. <laughs> oh god! But um, good though. So yeah, I, I would definitely watch it again if there was a reason to. Um, I know, like what what was the movie? that or like what what's the name it could have that would make it more appealing uh and like like just something that tricks you into thinking and it's something that it's not yeah that's that's, that's a good point <laughs> um i don't know maybe if they were like what's it what's it what's that actress name which one the the one that's in this movie D i can't pronounce her name the Lupa or the actress. Like. Oh, actress. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Lupita. 
Yeah, Lapita. If it was like twelve years with Lapita, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like you're still slave, but she's a slave yeah. too. Like, isn't that the case? Like, aren't they kind of like, oh, lovers possibly? I don't know. Yeah. Is that even the case? I just assumed, <laughs> really. I honestly don't remember. Because you don't cast a woman that attractive to just be like, hey, what's up? Firm handshake. <laughs> yeah, That's well, it. I seem to remember her being abused by the owners. Oh, God. See? Yeah. Ah, fuck. yeah, I feel like I've really softened myself up by not watching any confrontational movies for, like, years now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. All right, man. Um, I don't know. Should we do one more movie? Sure. But Rotten Dave should be on his way. You. Uh, okay, so, yeah, we didn't do this movie. It seems like we did, but one word title starts with an S, as in Shawshank. Snatch. You wish. Actually, <laughs> I wish. That is a better movie. Um, uh, Toby Maguire. Spider-Man. Sea Biscuit. Sea Biscuit. Never seen it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. He has a horse, and the horse wins the race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the there's the, yeah, there's really not too much to this movie. And this was this was nominated for like best picture. I remember that. And I, I think I might have watched it just because. Um, and, of course, Spider-Man's in it. But it's cute. It's very lighthearted. It's very non-controversial. You know, 12, 12 years of sea biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> what year did this come out? Like, 04 or 05 or something like that? Yeah, like 04, I want to say, or 03, something like Yeah, around that section. Yeah. Is it true that nobody on the planet has seen this movie since 05? <laughs> <laughs> like, really, it, it offer. I don't want to say it offers nothing, but it, it's just like, it's just kind of there. It's very, uh, you ever watch uh, Finding Neverland? No. That was the same way where it's like, it's super light and fluffy and, you know, there there's some like, oh, you're kind of sad, but it's okay. It, I don't know. It's a very emotionally supportive movie the sea biscuit <laughs> <laughs> how does it compare to a uh, war horse never saw war horse was it good okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well in that case no it was cute okay so it's it's told in a kind of an interesting way too where like it's there's it's uh toby mcguire as the the jockey and it's jeff bridges as the owner and it's Chris Cooper, who I like, is the trainer, and uh, and it's uh, this mishmash of people. Like that was the whole part. Like Jeff Bridges, like you know, our our horse is too small, our jockey's too big, our trainer's too old, and I'm too dumb to know the difference or whatever. <laughs> and it's just is about he, uh, cantankerous Bridges, or is he more chill? No, he's he's the showman. He's the one that has to kind of. Sell oh, okay. sell the tickets and stuff. It's Gary. It's uh, Gary Oldman. Uh, Chris Cooper, who's the you know he's, he's old, but he knows his stuff and yeah. But anyways, it it's kind of cool because the movie starts off with like a little short story about Jeff Bridges, and then it's about Chris Cooper, then it's about Tobey Maguire, and then the fourth intro is the horse, and you see his <laughs> little story, and you're like, oh, this is so cute. That's all it was. It was just very non-threatening. You'll have a good time, but you'll probably not really think about it too much afterwards. So yeah, no one probably watched this <laughs> since 2005. <laughs> How many uh, horses did they kill in the making of this movie? You know what? This has some of the worst horse riding effects I, I've ever seen. Uh, it's just a big close up on them, and there's these obvious robotic horses that they're <laughs> that's just moving like this. So it's just it looks so bad. It looks so fake. Yeah. Did you buy Toby as a jockey? Was I he able to sell it. I did. Yeah, I remember he has a temper on him that, because people pick on him and shit. So 
horse riding kind of soothes that and stuff. So, yeah, I like I said, this was good. Chris Cooper was good. Jeff Bridges was good. Even um, William H. Macy got like a Golden Globe nomination because he was the announcer and you would have those stupid little sound effects things trying to make stupid jokes. Yeah. Man, I thought this cast sounds like a movie I would love. Yeah, it's it's just fine. It's just fine. How tall is Toby Maguire? IRL. <laughs> oh God. Are we seriously gonna stretch this out until <laughs> <laughs> I was I was re-watching this. I was in the labs and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we don't have to wait for Dave. Man, Jodie Foster, her uh, <laughs> freaky blue eyes, though, right? <laughs> oh God. Um, well, we could do another movie. I mean, I don't. I I've run out of things for Sea Biscuit. All right, let's do one more, and this time I mean it. <laughs> oh, all right. We've got two word title. First word is the. Second word starts with L. The lookout. Um, it's from a pair of directors who've done a lot of movies. And this is often cited as their worst movie. Oh, okay. Um, was it like a Farley film or nope. Fairly Brothers? Nope. Um, it's got the same lead as um, the Da Vinci Code. Okay, so yeah. Tom Hanks. Yeah. In uh, the L. Oh, the Lady Killers. Yes. Never seen it. Kind of wanted to, but then heard really bad stuff about <laughs> it. So I was like, oh, never mind. But it's like I think it's a remake. Yeah, I've never seen the original, but it yeah, it's a, a remake as far as I know. Uh, Coen Brothers. Um. So uh, Marlon Marlon Wayans, who I'm a fan of. But yeah, I don't know. I was like, Tom Hanks looks funny. He's like, he's got this outrageous accent and stuff. But <laughs> I just heard that it wasn't good. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't hate it. But if I'm putting it up against all the other Coen Brothers movies that it definitely stands out as not as good. If someone else made it, I think people might be like, "Oh yeah, that was that was fine." Like, oh really? Uh, yeah. Okay. So if, so if I made it, they'd be like, oh, my God, yeah, like, <laughs> you're the next code brother. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Exactly. Okay, um, well, uh, what is it about, though? I mean, yeah, uh, so... l let me tell you, okay? Oh, right, exactly. I think it's just a classic caper where it's like, you know, you you arrange a crew of people. One's like a demolition expert. One's a, I don't know, signature fraud dude or whatever. One wears his disguises or something, but I think they they're trying to tunnel into a bank or something. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly all I know. right. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Yep, and they, um, yeah. So uh, Tom Hanks is the the mastermind behind it, and they he, yeah, like exactly like you say, he gets this band together of um people to with their their different skills. And he um, figures out the best place to tunnel in from is this like old church lady's house. And, you know, like, so she's very um, proper Jesus minded person. And then he um, brings his band together to practice down in her basement. And, you know, really they're doing their plotting and digging and whatnot. Um, it's got J.K. Simmons in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, man. Um, but yeah, basically, um, it it's like the Cohen brother idiot, like um, you know, people. Um, everything goes wrong with the the plans they're trying to hatch and stuff, and um. Trying to remember exactly the the details, but essentially, like I think they end up like dying one by one through like um 
like I think they were like trying to finally just like take her out and like she's just been in our way this whole time and then through their ineptitude they keep on getting killed like when they're trying to like take her out basically kind of oh, like okay. a Looney Tunes kind of thing yeah that's that's cool yeah it's probably it probably is good it's just you know, it's the fucking Cohen Brothers, man. <laughs> uh, and I believe Dave is joining us now at the tail end. And man, I think if the theme, if there's a theme to this episode so far, it's been like movies that kind of disappointed us a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Except for 28 Days Later. Oh, yeah. Dave, what's up, man? And then, then we talked about the sequel, which kind of disappointed me. It, it needs to be watched again. Uh, Dave... Um, you know what? I'm gonna pull a pull a silence of the lambs. Uh what are your thoughts about twenty eight days later? We're already done, but uh you have any thoughts? Uh the first one, twenty eight days later? Yes. Yeah, okay. The other one was weeks. Yeah, twenty eight days later was great. I week loved it. week is in W E A K. <laughs> no. You didn't like it? I'm so confused. I have I'm I have I just like Robert Carlyle's part in Weeks. That's the best part. The dad. Where's the dad? Oh, Weeks. That's the sequel. That's the second one. Yes. yes. Okay. That one was super forgettable. I watched it and I was like, eh. And I have no desire to watch it again. Okay. What about that first one, though? The first one was amazing. I loved it. It was like the soundtrack was incredible. Like it was like low budget, um, but incredibly well done. Like, I don't know, like being low budget can be used as like an insult sometimes, but this is like low budget in the best way possible. Um, it was just like up close, gritty, in your face zombie apocalypse. Like you don't need like I am legend and like CGI or any of that. Um, yeah, I don't know. And then what's his name? Uh, Killian Murphy was amazing. It was the first yeah. time I ever saw him. He's great. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah, uh, well, but this is fast zombies. Where are you when it comes to zombies? Do you like your zombies slow? Like you like your women? <laughs> I mean, they. I don't know. It's so weird. But like, you can have like one thing. I don't know. My idea is that a zombie can have, like, one ability. It can either move fast or it can survive, like, not having any legs or arms or something. But it has to die with a headshot, but not, like, multiple headshots. Like, I don't know. Like, every movie has, like, their own little weird thing that they do with them. But as long as it's, like, nothing too crazy. Like, I Am Legend, where, like, they're like little miniature scientists, the zombies are, and they're like trying to find the cure for their disease. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, like, I, I, they're supposed to be like brain dead zombies, but not. And they were budget. vampires in that movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So now that you brought that up, have any of you guys seen like the Omega Man or Night, uh, Last Man on Earth, which is, which is all the same story? No. Mm, no. You yeah, know. so yeah, apparently the the authors like I don't know why they keep making this movie when they don't understand it. Like they always botch the end. The whole idea was that Will Smith is the legend of the for the vampires. They're like there's this legend of this guy who's just killing us. Like he's not <laughs> trying to talk to us, but like when we're sleeping, he he shows up and it's just murdering us on mass and stuff like that. So it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Anyways, uh, you know what? I, I feel like that's it. Uh, Dave, you mentioned the soundtrack. For sure, man. I think that's a future love. That fucking soundtrack. That's, that's good stuff. Yeah, All right. I love that theme. Uh, but anyways, until that time, until that show, which is after this, uh, yeah. we need you to like, subscribe, comment if you're on YouTube. Go to uh, mymoviericollection.com. Uh, I was Vincent Cloud. I'm John Nemitz. And David Lauer.